Disclaimer, disclaimer, all videos and images and likenesses of whoever and whatever are protected under the Privacy Act. None of these images and none of these videos are being used for profit. All videos are for educational purposes only. Welcome to the Wake Up Show. Time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Up your wake, up your wake, up your wake, up your wake. It's time to wake up. Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom, 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 Shalom. All praise is due to the Most High, all glory to the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Wake Up Show. Please like and share. Uh, just a warning. Well, I got two warnings. One, I might get kicked off. <laughs> Y'all know what time we living in, right? So I might get kicked off for this lesson. If I do, then I'll just try to do it again another time. And number two, as you can see in the title, parental discretion is advised. Let me let everybody know this right now. This lesson We'll have some images and some videos that might you might consider to be disturbing to children. All right. So that's why this is. OK, what's going on? They messing with me already. Let's see. Let's keep going. So like I'm saying, this video, homosexuality, the attack on the children is about the attack on the children. Now, I know when I posted yesterday, some people were saying, oh, yeah, you know, it's an attack on the world. Yes, it is. But what this video and this lesson is going to deal with is how Satan has been attacking the children all the time for them to believe something that goes against the word of God. And it has come down through us to be honest with you, I'm going to show you in this, especially a lot of you parents, 
you're going to see some things from our past. And it, it if you have not seen this lesson before, you're going to be like, wow, I never saw that. I never knew that. So again, like and share the video. Thank you for tuning in, everybody on Facebook and everybody on Periscope. Let's open up. I'm not going to use all four of the verses I normally do, but we're going to open up so for the newcomers, all right? So, let's start at Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who is the he? He is the Lord. So, who is he going to teach knowledge to? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Remember when Christ came to reteach his priests, he said the doctrine is not of mine. It's of the father's. So let's understand who the he is is teaching. He is the father using Christ to teach us. And when it comes to us, who did Christ come and reteach? The nation of Israel. He came and got 12 new priests. Okay. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. You can go in the book. Here a little. There a little. Precept upon precept. And put messages together that are sound doctrine. Now some people. They've put. They've taken. They've done the same thing and made false doctrines. This is where you got to ask the Lord to help you understand what the real doctrine of, of the Father is through Christ. How is he going to do this? Verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak unto this people. He's saying that through other languages, I'm going to speak to this people. He did not say, I'm only going to speak to those who can speak Hebrew. There's nothing wrong with Hebrew. You want to learn it? Okay, fine and dandy. But once you learn it, don't turn around and start saying, hey, y'all not going to understand nothing because you listening in English. Let's go to Isaiah 8 verse 20. How are we supposed to teach to the law? And to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So as the priest of God, we're supposed to teach from Genesis to Revelation. Plain and simple. You can't just teach Torah without the testimony. You can't teach just the Old Testament without the testimony. You can't just keep you can't just teach the testimony without the Torah. And Moses and the prophets, you, you have to have them all together. That's what the book says. And now that we know that, <laughs> I can't help it. Let's go to Revelation 14. <laughs> I wasn't going to read these, but it's, it's on me to do it. Revelation 14, who are the ones who actually did what we just talked about? Let's read Revelation 14. In verse 12, here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that's why you need the law and the testimony. Because if you don't have the law and the testimony, you're not a saint. And a matter of fact, let's go back a chapter, two chapters. This is how I know you got to have the law and the testimony. And you have to be a saint in order to, to, to actually get into the kingdom. Revelation 12, verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. That's Israel. That's the commonwealth of Israel. That's the Israelites and any other nation who decides to become a part of the commonwealth of Israel and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you don't have the law and the testimony, you're not a saint and Satan ain't going to go to war with you. He going after war. He's going to war with the ones who's trying to do exactly what Christ said to do. Keep the law. Now, we got that out the way. Let's open up in Ephesians 6. This lesson is called Homosexuality, the Attack on the Children. 
All right. Now, this has been going on for a long time. It's just that a lot of us have not seen it. A lot of things were used against us when we were children and went over our head. Thank God most of us didn't go astray. All right. But it's also our job to try to help those who have gone astray because of the way Satan loves to communicate the evil of the world to us. All right. So, again, before we get started, please like, share the video. Um, let's get into the lesson. Homosexuality, the attack on the children. Let's go to Ephesians 6. We're going to start reading at verse 10. And again, before we get started again, parental discretion is advised. There will be some videos and some images that might be disturbing to children. Now, I'm talking little children, all right? But this video is mainly for the adults. It's mainly for you guys, all right? Now, you can show your teenagers if you want to show your children after this is over with. Cool. So I'm just giving that warning, okay? Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're not wrestling against homosexuals. All right. We're wrestling against who's trying to influence the homosexuals to, to influence the rest of the world. This ain't about flesh and blood. This is about fighting against the wiles of the devil of this world. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having a breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye were able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And hopefully that's what this lesson will actually end up doing. Not just helping children that you show and watch, that watch this, but helping the adults help the children. All right, let's keep reading. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's this Bible that we're all reading right now. This is the sword of the spirit. It's the word of God. Verse. All right. That, that's it for that one. Let's go to Revelation 9. Because let's remember what the book just said to an event. And it's saying, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand the wiles of the devil. So you have to be able to stand with the with what the I'm sorry, the wiles of the devil. And how is that with the armor of God? But why do you need the armor of God to withstand the wiles of the devil? Let's go to Revelation 12 and read why. You have to be able to know that I got uh, you got this word and a lot of us will get it, read it. But now we got to live it. And the ways of this world does not want us to actually live it. Revelation 12, verse 9. This is why we have to have on the whole armor of God. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's why we got to have on the armor of God. Because the whole world is going to get to a point where everything is totally against God, period. We're not totally there yet, but it's it's coming. He has cat he was cast into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. So it's not only Satan, but the ones that he talked to. So understand this. If Satan talked one third, remember we don't know how many angels there are. 
But if he talked one third of the angels to turn against the against God who they saw, this dude is smart. And the father knows this because he created him. But this dude is evil. And so the Lord is telling us, beware of him. The same way he told Adam in the garden. Don't talk to this dude. But we all know what happened. Let's go to Genesis 3. Let's go read. So we need the armor of God. Because Satan is deceiving the whole world. And how is he doing it? He's doing it through communication. His, his ammo has never changed. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis 3. And let's read how he started fooling the whole world. Genesis 3. Again, let me let everyone know. Parental discretion is advised. You will see images and videos that may be disturbing to your children. All right. Genesis 3 verse 1. Let's see how, let's see how, how, how the wiles of the devil being performed here in the book. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, hath God said that ye shall eat of every tree in the garden? So he's asking Eve a question. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of the eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. How did Eve know this? Because she was under the protection and the cover of her husband, and her husband told her that was our job as men. That's how we protect our women by telling them what the word of God is saying. Now, if they choose to go from up under our protection and our covering like Eve is about to do right now, it's on them. And vice versa. Women, if you got a husband that didn't turn into Nabal, you better stick with what the word of God say. Verse four. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. This is the first lie told to man he lied to her but this is the this is the pattern that satan has that he mixes lies with the truth to make it all sound like the truth verse four again and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die contrary to what the word of god says for god doth know that in that day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil which is the truth it wasn't time for us to learn good and evil. That's why the Lord said, don't talk to Satan. But this is the pattern. These two verses, what Satan has been doing since the garden, mixing lies with the truth. Let's skip down to verse 12. Now, after everything was all, you know, the fall of man, that's what everyone likes to call it. Let's see what happened. Verse 12. And the man said, the woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So we know Satan will work through women to get to men. I'm sorry, sisters. I, I understand you. No, oh, no, some of these men is evil. Some men are evil, but Satan's pattern has always let me get to the woman in order to get to the man. And that's what has happened these days when it comes to homosexuality. Most of the ones who sit and promote these cats are women. I'm about to lose some subscribers, I understand. A lot of the women will sit up and go shopping with homosexual men. Now again, if you got somebody that's a friend, all right, cool. But if you start doing things with them as if they are a woman and saying stuff like go girl you're helping promote that and satan ain't never changed his his game he's never changed it let's skip down to verse 19 now this was the punishment 
for Adam listening to his wife. After the Lord said, don't talk. Now, remember, he didn't talk to Satan. She did. But then that communication that the Lord, that, that uh, Satan gave over to the woman, the woman now gave it over to Adam. And here's his punishment. In the sweat of thy face, thou shalt eat bread. Thou shalt return unto the, until thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. Now here's our punishment. And we've been going through this ever since. We've been going through the same thing ever since. Nothing has changed. Satan's punishment was to, uh, you know what? We're going to skip all that because I don't, I don't want to run. I want to do all these videos. So Satan's punishment was to eat the dust of the ground. If you read this whole chapter, let's go to first Peter. Let's go to first Peter. Because that was his punishment. Our punishment was to, uh, we have to till the ground. We got to work to eat, basically. That's what it comes down to. You know what? My time, I done talked too much already. Let's, let's, uh, okay, you can read 1 Peter 5 and 8 on your own. And it's talking about the things that Satan was doing, walking around seeing who he can devour. Just like he devoured Eve, but he also devoured Adam through Eve. Satan has to work through people. He can't come to you directly anymore because of what he did in the garden. And the thing is that when, when he did this, the Lord had a problem with him. It's like, man, you done did this now? So now he had to give him some more limitations <laughs> let's go to jude one and six well let's just go to jude and six and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day so the angels and satan can't come to us directly no more they have to try to influence people to do the work for them and it's been going on ever since. Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing at all. Let's go to Ephesians 2. I might be speeding up a little bit. Ephesians 2. So we know we got to keep the armor of God to withstand, the, to withstand the wiles of the devil. Satan works through people. That's how he has his wiles and his fiery darts going out. Sometimes he could try to influence you through other things. And that's what we're going to deal with today. Ephesians 2 verse 2. Where in times past ye walked into according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, what does the prince of the power of the air do? He communicates. Like I said, he started this in the garden. He's the prince of the power of the air. That is communication. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So it's already working. It's in the children of disobedience. Because he's been doing this ever since the garden through communication. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath even as others. So we all have felt into this trap there's not one person on this planet that has not fell somewhere when it comes to satan with the vials of the devil so this isn't to bash this 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 lesson is not to bash homosexuals it's to show what satan is doing through people to to go against what the word of god says that's the thing how is he doing it today? The easiest way he can. Through the television. He is the prince of the power of the air. That means he can communicate. He's not controlling the oxygen that we breathe. That is the father. That's the breath of life. But what he's doing, this one here, is using 
He's always used communication, whether it was through people and now and then it got through like magazines and then it got through the telephone and then the television came and now it's everywhere. We got the Internet. This is how Satan is throwing wiles at people. Through the television, who controls this television? Let's go ahead and get me in trouble. Uh, Revelation 2 Revelation 2 and 9 I know thy works He's talking to Israel And tribulation and poverty But thou art rich And I know the blaspheme of them Which say they are Jews And are not But are of the synagogue of Satan That's right sister Savannah Music too I know that personally I contributed to that stuff so that's why I'm no better than anybody else. But the ones that control this television, this right here, that the people are addicted to, are who? Those that call themselves Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. I'm not trying to push that. The Lord said he's going to do it. So you will never see me out on the street telling people, kiss my boots. The Lord said, when that happens, I'm going to make it happen. There's too many brothers out here trying to make things happen now. But the synagogue of Satan does the will of Satan. And he controls that. And he's using the television. He's using the television. Let's go to Genesis, Gen, uh, Genesis 8. Let's go to Genesis 8. Hold on, people. All right. Had to get rid of somebody first. You know, normally I don't look at my screen. Had to get rid of people already because this is about the children. You anybody want to argue about who Israel is? If Israel's not the church, we can do that on another day. But if you come on here, it's, it's a done deal. What did I say? Genesis eight. So we again, let's recap. We put on the armor of God. Because we got to watch, we have to be able to withstand whatever Satan throws our way. And in these days, he's doing it through this right here, the television and through the Internet. Why is he doing that? Because he's trying to get to who? Genesis 8 verse 21. Uh, where you at? Where you at? Where? 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore. For man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. If the father says this, Satan knows this too. The imagination of man is evil from his youth. So I got to cater to the youth. So as they get older, they continue the evil that keeps going on. Let's go to Genesis 9. Let's go to Genesis 9. Genesis 9, verse 8. Let's read about God's rainbow. This is God's rainbow. But now this rainbow has taken on a new meaning. And it's being, it's being geared towards the children these days. They're making clothing lines with rainbows on them because they're trying to make sure they get the children to accept what God has rejected. Chapter 9, verse 8. And God spake unto Noah to his sons and, and with him saying, And I, behold, I will establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl and of the cattle and every beast of the earth from you, with you, from all out of the ark to the, every beast of the earth. 
and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. This is forever. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a token of, I'm sorry. And I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And if it come to pass that when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember the covenant with which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may be rem I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. This is what the bow is for. The rainbow is because of God's promise. But what has Satan had a people do? Use it as a symbol of pride. So they're hiding behind the rainbow. That's what this is all about. We're doing something wrong, but I'm a, we're going to mock God with his rainbow. And that's what it comes down to. It's so hard that this is what's going on. Now your children are thinking that this is okay. Again, let me warn people that's coming on. Parental discretion is advised. I, there will be images that might be disturbing. If you don't have a good stomach, hey, don't watch. But if you want to watch and then show your children later, okay. But this is what's going on. We have the teenagers going to Pride Day parades. And they think that it's fun. Not knowing the consequences for prom help promoting this. But that rainbow has nothing to do with homosexuality. The rainbow has everything to do with what God said he was not going to do to us anymore. So that's why they're hiding behind the rainbow. Let's get into some things that I dealt with as a child. I want people to understand, again, I'm speaking to the adults. I'm going to just let y'all know I'm 51 years old. I'm going to take us through some things that I saw from when I was a kid, kid from the seventies all the way up to now. But this thing, but this stuff has been going on way before this. Now here in Chicago, back in the seventies on channel 32 at noon, there used to be this show called the banana splits and the banana splits was a, was a show that showed the three stooges, the Little Rascals, and a couple of cartoons, too. And then, the, then they also have one called uh, the, the Stooges Rascal Hour. All right? I really didn't like Three Stooges that much, right? But I love the Little Rascals because I was a kid kid, like I said, and I identified with them. The slapstick comedy really wasn't all that great to me, but I had to watch it and if I wanted to see... Um, the, the little rascals. But in my in my memory, the first thing that I can remember seeing when it came to going against the word of God was this. Now that I have this knowledge, this is the first thing that I can remember seeing. And God had a pro has a problem with this. I hope there's some people that are actors or actresses that watch this video because we can't promote this. Let's read Deuteronomy 22 and let's start reading at verse five. 
Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which it pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord. The Lord ain't playing. If you're doing this for theater, you doing it for a party. The Lord is like, no. The one thing I have noticed when Halloween comes up. And you know we don't do Halloween. But if anybody ever noticed, most of the men dress up as women. Especially prostitutes. One year I had put up a post. <laughs> one year I put up a post and said, uh, all I see is men dressed up as women and women dressed up as hoes. Because the women would dress up like prostitutes, but the men would dress up as women. Or and prostitutes. And this is what the Lord said not to do. This was the first time I saw an Israelite. I knew. Now for those that don't know. This is Flip Wilson. When I was a kid I didn't know that he was a great comedian. A lot of people don't talk about Flip, Flip Wilson when they use. When they talk about old comedians. A lot of people don't talk about Flip Wilson. Why? Why? Because he was best known for this. He was best known for this. I remember seeing this. The first time I remember seeing this is, you know, a lot of you guys know that I'm a, that I was adopted, right? But when I was living with my biological father, he watched the Flip Wilson show. I didn't get the jokes, but when I but when Geraldine came out, this was hilarious to me. Because I knew this was a dude in a woman's outfit. I did not get the jokes. I didn't get them at all. But the Lord again is saying that men are not supposed to do this, even for entertainment. Everybody know who this is? It's Tom Hanks. See, the reason I'm saying actors and actresses should watch this is because a lot of you go are going to get um, challenged to do things to better your career. And you're going to have to go against the word of God in order to do it. For those that don't know, this it was a show about two men who had to live. Again, I'm in the 70s, y'all. This was two men who couldn't find a place to stay. So they stayed at a all woman's hotel. And the only reason they could stay in there is if they dressed like this. See, this whole promotion of homosexuality has been going on for a minute. It's just that a lot of us, it went past our head because we looked at it as, oh, it's just entertainment. But the show is called Bosom Buddies. And it was a really, really popular show just because these guys dressed up as women. Now, Tom Hanks, we already know, you know, he's one, one of the greatest actors out here. The other dude, I don't know what happened to him. But these are the things that get that has gone past us. So imagine the things is going past our children. This is why this video is being done, because us as parents, we got to start looking at what our children is watching. Yep. Some of the greatest TV shows that came on CBS were doing the same thing. This is all in the family. And some people probably don't even remember that, that Archie Bunker... There was a guy, there was a Gabe. They call, you know what they didn't call it drag queens back then? They called it female impersonators. That's right. They didn't call them drag queens back then. They called them female impersonators. And this dude on this show was supposed to be one of the one of the the the, the popular female impersonators. And so what happened is is that Archie did not like this dude. He really did not like him. 
Uh, everybody go to 1 Corinthians 6. But he did not like this, this dude right here. And they did a couple of episodes. And it was a couple of them. They did a couple of episodes to get Archie to change his mind. Here again, you're you Satan's using the woman. Okay, understand, sisters. I'm not downing you. I'm just showing you what Satan has done. He used the woman, which was Edith Bunker, to be friends with this guy, and she was the one always talking about, "Oh, Archie, there's nothing wrong with this. And, you know, you, you he's just a good per you know." All of that was going on. So eventually, this happened. On the show. Us tripping on the fact that men kiss men these days, it's been going on, man. Because Satan was attacking not just the world, but the youth. That's why. But we're not supposed to even do this. In the 70s, this was an issue as well. Again, I'm going to say it again. Parental discretion is advised. And if any of you don't have a stomach to watch this, you know, you can go ahead and log off. I won't be upset. But this has to get out because I want parents to see the pattern that has been going on, even with us. And we really got to watch what our children are, and teach them what the word of God says. So when they see stuff like this, they don't fall for the trap. But this was a one. It was the seventies, most popular rock opera. All right. The Rocky horror picture show. This was the most popular rock opera. They tried to revive it again in the 80s and stuff because so many people went to go see this. They would have everyone come dress up and they would show the thing at the theater. And some people, you know, they had people get up on the stage and sing songs with the with the video, with the movie going on. That's how popular this was. But this was in the 70s. Satan works slowly, even though his time is short. He got plenty of time compared to us. He's not going to come immediately and be like, hey, y'all got to accept this. He got to work through people. How? Communication. Prince of the power of the air. Oh, yeah, people. I know some of y'all about to be upset with me. But I got to put it out here. Even Israel. This is our beloved brother, Prince Rogers Nelson. And in the 70s, there was a show called The Midnight Special. Coming to shine a bright light on you, baby. And this was Prince's first time appearing in, in, to the world, which was on The Midnight Special. I can't remember what the song was. And this, it did shock. A lot of people, but the rock era in the 70s was already doing effeminate stuff. And this right here is called infeminate. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and read. All right, this is in the New Testament. This is what Paul said. Let's read. Verse 9. Know ye not, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Remember what this is all talking about. The unrighteous. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Okay. Nor idolaters. Nor adulterers. Nor effeminate. Because remember in the law we just read where a man is not supposed to put on women's garments. You're not supposed to be looking like a woman. This is what the Lord says. This ain't what Brother Az is saying. Let's keep reading. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. 
That is homosexuality. But what did the top, what did the beginning of the verse say? Know that not that the, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom. So yeah, this is fornicators, people sleeping around, idolaters, people that's messing around with idols, adulterers, people cheating on their husbands and wives, nor effeminate, who are people, brothers, who are teaching, uh, wearing women's garments and abusers of themselves with mankind. Same thing. And it applies to the women as well. It also applies to the women as well. Let's keep reading. Nor thieves. See, I'm not just going to single out a femininity. We're going to read the whole thing. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Oh, people that like to get drunk, not getting into the kingdom. Nor rivalers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's the first time I saw Prince. And was like, what? Love the brother's music. But never got into the way he dressed. And I know this was all a gimmick to actually get people to listen and watch him. I know that. It's called promotion. It's called listening to your publicist. And again, those that are in the entertainment industry, whether you are a singer, writer, whatever. Beware of publicists. Beware of people that tell you if you wear this. This will catch the attention of people and you can sell records because if it's something to do that goes against the word of God to promote you, you better think twice about it. Come on. All right. Yep. B-52's Love Shack. Now we in the 80s because Prince went from the 70s to the 80s, but now we in the 80s. B-52's Love Shack. I remember when this video came out and all the brothers was talking about, man, did you see the black chick in that video? Come to find out this is a man. Come to find out later on in life, this is a man. I'm quite sure everybody in New York knew who this was. Everybody on the underground scene when it came to homosexuality knew who this was. But the rest of the brothers around the world was like, wow, who was that? And it's a man. Who was it? RuPaul. It was a man. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what's going on to be put out here. And it really is an attack against the not just the world, but the youth. Because the youth are the one that's looking at, oh, this is okay. And as you get older, you'd be like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's Satan's motto. That's his ammo. Even when you look at Adam and Eve, in their mind, they were young. They were not grown. Their body might have been grown, but they were not. Same thing when it comes to especially Israel. Who played the funniest woman? They were all funny. But these were these were things that were not supposed to be done, man. Now that we know this word, this is why, again, you know, it, to see these brothers do this when they did it, it was funny. But now that you know the word of God, it's like, man. And let me say this. I'm not judging these cats because, again, none of these cats are dead. Everybody has a chance to repent from whatever they've done before. I hope Prince repented from what he did before. I want to believe he did, but that's between him and God. I don't know. But this is not what is supposed to be going on according to the, to the course of God's commandments. But the course of this world says it's all right. And this, you know, Eddie Murphy. These are the things that get promoted. And like I said, as time goes by, we started in the we started early with the three stooges and we done worked our way up to the 90s now. The more and more things get shown, the more and more it's accepted. We all know about Medea. This brother has made so much money. 
Anytime Kenneth, what is his name? Kenneth Copeland buys a jet from him, from T Tyler Perry, you know Tyler Perry making some money. But again, everybody has a chance to repent. I, even in the entertainment industry, I did some songs that was evil until the Lord woke me. Well, until I asked the Lord to wake me up, I said, I want to know your truth. And once he showed it to me, man, I look back on what I've done. And, and some people be liking to talk about the stuff I've done. I tell them straight out, I, I really don't want to talk about it. I really don't. I don't like talking about it. I let people know that I used to be in it, but I don't like talking about specific songs and all of that stuff. But everybody got a chance to repent. But again, Medea is funny and the kids loved it too. Kids are the one that loved it too. Do y'all see the pattern now that I've been showing since the beginning of this lesson? These are the Wayan brothers and white girls. It's all for entertainment, but what did the Lord say? The Lord said, men don't dress up as women. Do not put on women's garments. Let's make a, a, a good distinction between women's garments too. Men's garments, let me check myself. We got to zip up <laughs> from the right side, right? And I'm not, I don't really re remember since I, I worked at Gina Cole when I was a shorty. But I do believe that all women's jeans zip up from the left side. I know it's from the opposite side. I know that. So if you're wearing women's jeans, that's a woman's garment. We've been bombarded with this stuff, man. And we felt like it was hilarious. And a lot of it was. A lot of this stuff, you know, hated it. All that stuff was funny. But now that we read this book and be like, wow. Now you could see some of the wiles of the devil. Especially through communicating through the power of the air. He's the prince of the power of the air. He ain't stopped and he ain't going to stop till the Lord put him away. This right here, man, this brother, man, if anybody ever seen this movie, what is it? Rosewood, right? Yeah. Anybody ever seen this money? I mean, this money, this movie, man, as a, when I was younger, man, when this movie came out, man, I was so proud of this brother, man. I was like, man. If you don't know the story, it's because there was some stranger that went through a town. He actually ended up sleeping with a with a white woman, a Caucasian or a Gentile, and he beat her up. And he left. And when the husband came home, he said, "How did this happen?" She's claimed raped by a black man. And then the, then all the, the the Gentiles of that region went to the other town, and they started killing everybody. Well. Man, Rames, that brother ran. He had to, because he was a stranger in that town and they thought it was him. But what made me proud is that the, near the end of the movie is when the brother came back. He came back for his woman. And boy, I used to be in love with this one, but he came back for his woman. And this was the name of the movie. Yeah, Rosewood. I was so proud. I was like, look at that black man. He came back. That's what we supposed to be doing. We supposed to be protecting our women. And I was like, yeah, but you know, the curses too be messing with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you, you know, the movie showed him, but what if he really came back and got killed trying to get his woman, you know, because of the curses. But he came back and he got his woman. And I was happy. Till this happened. Man, when this happened, this broke my heart. I was like, no, brother. No, man. Come on. Why did you do this? I'm quite sure some publicist said to him, if you do this, you know how many people will love you and then you can advance in your career. And again, 
Brother Rames, if you watch this, I ain't got nothing against you, bro. I don't want them hands on me. I'm just making a point. <laughs> but I was hurt. I don't know how many brothers, y'all could put up ones or whatever, but how many of y'all brothers was hurt? How many of y'all, period? Sisters, I'm quite sure sisters was like, oh, that big old black man. And then when you saw this, how many of y'all was hurt? Like, come on. Why? All of this is to attack. And again, it's, it's, it's to show that this is okay. And our children are watching things like this. But right now, I'm just dealing with us as parents. We're going to get into the children in a second. These are the things that we came up with. But yeah, this, this broke my heart, man. Now we're going to deal with the kids. Kids got rappers dressing in mini skirts. These are the things that they have to deal with. This is why we got to deal with our kids. And a lot of people don't do this. We must teach our kids because look, remember when we came up out of the land of Egypt, the, those, our forefathers that died in the will, they never taught their kids. They did not circumcise them boys. And all of them died in the wilderness. Caleb and Joseph had to teach them. They taught them. They said, hey, stick to what we told you. But because them kids was not raised right, they fell off, didn't teach their kids either, started uh, worshiping Baal and Ashtaroth and Judges too. This the Migos. Last time I did this lesson, my kids were here with me. You know, they, they, they with their mom now for the summer. But my daughter was like, oh, no. This, they started somewhere, I can't remember. I don't think it was the 80s. I think it was the 90s going into the 2000s. They started this thing called Metrosexual. Now, some of these outfits these cats got on, uh, you know, I ain't tripping on that. But the fact that this dude got a purse, that's not a man bag. That's a purse. See, things creep in slowly. And then you, you get this. Satan is using the hip hop industry or the music industry, period. He's using the television industry. This He's the prince of the power of the air. But we had it too. Let me tell y'all something. These are not the way these brothers was dressing on the street. I was telling you about publicists. Publicists in the music industry convince you. Stylists. They convince you to do things. You better make sure it ain't going against the word of God. I'm just, I'm speaking to my, my brothers and sisters who feel if I do this, this will help my career. I'm always asking the question now, especially when it comes to women. Why do you have to show your behind and your legs? If you are a great singer, why do you got to do all that? But this is what we had to deal with in hip hop in the beginning. Same thing. This is starting in the late 70s into the 80s. It was going there. That rap group was looking like the village people. Now let's get something straight. All the uniforms they got on is men uniforms. But everybody knew that these cats were gay. This is when the transition started happening. Well, we're going to be gay. We're going to dress as men, but we're also going to dress a certain way where it don't look right. I was a kid, kid. I knew this kid. I knew these cats was gay. Everybody knew YMCA. 
Everybody knew. A lot of people don't even know that YMCA was a gay anthem to tell other gay men where to meet gay men at the YMCA. Listen to them lyrics again, y'all. Through the music, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Now, Sister Adaya, if you're talking about, because you said, I see your comment. I didn't know they were gay. If you're talking about this rap group, no, it's the image. All right. That's that's the image right there. But as far as the village people. Yeah, these these cats were all gay. And then they tried to do another album in the 80s that nobody ever knew about. And look, and this was that so-called metrosexual thing, which was nothing but in femininity. It was slowly creeping. It started in the 70s, y'all. Some of the hard rock groups like Alice Cooper and all of those cats, man, Kiss, they was, they was the, kind of the first ones I remember with the infeminate look. Even in the 80s, a lot of rock groups was wearing, they call them spandex. Ladies, y'all call them leggings. They was wearing them then. Let me say this to the brothers and whoever this brother is on here, because I'm actually reading comments. A lot of people like to get on when I do lessons like this. Where's the word at? Where's the word at? Let me tell you something. If you ain't didn't come here from the beginning of the video, you missed a lot of the word, which but we still got more word coming. And I'm going to say that to all the people that like to make phone calls on me, too. Every lesson I do has word in it. Now, if you got a problem with me teaching about homosexuality being sent to the kids. Then I'm asking, what's your problem? <laughs> what is your problem, bro? If you got a problem with this message? Could you be a homosexual? I'm just asking, Mr. Words Bernard. But back to the lesson. Because I can get distracted, but not that easily. Yep. We in the 2000s now. This is a blouse. I want to, I want for people to understand there are shirts called, I think it's called Kurtas. All right. You see a lot of the Indians or African men wearing them that are long. Hey, I'm going to get me some, but this is not one of them. This is a blouse. This is a straight up blouse. That's a woman's garment. This is not what we're supposed to be wearing. When I first did, this is my third time doing this lesson. When my kids was here, and again, when my daughter saw this again, oh, I said, yeah. I got a niece that was in love with this dude. I'm quite, I'm quite sure a lot of people were like, what in the world? He got a blouse on? Because it's to promote, to try to get you to go and to be noticed. But if you're doing against the word of God, you can't be doing this. Let's keep pushing. Nope. It's on the runways. Again, Satan is using every avenue of communication to, for people to go against the word of God. This is woman's garments. This is in femininity. My brothers and sisters that are watching this, that may be into this, again, repent. This is on a CTA bus here in Chicago. Because now what has happened is that because when we were kids and we saw this stuff on television, now... It's, it's playing itself out.
It's playing itself out now. Dude got on a leopard outfit with heels on. This isn't femininity and this is women's garments. This is going against the word of God. Not the word of Azza, against the word of God. Mini skirts. I know the ladies are looking and saying, man, I really like those boots. Man, listen. That whole outfit. I ain't going to say nothing about the shirt, but them skirts and them boots, that's women's garments. That wasn't a blouse, Sister Clark. That was a negligee. Hey, men ain't supposed to wear negligees either, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, whatever it was, I know it was a woman's garment. But a lot of times, we are trained to think that this is okay because, again, the attack goes to the youth. Let's keep it moving. Even in the schools, this dude was elected queen of the prom. Because our children in schools are being told this is okay now. Brother Bernard. Look, bro, I don't know what's going on between you and another person, but could y'all please chill with that? Let's get this lesson. Y'all can hit each other in, in, the, in, the, um, in the inbox, man. But on this lesson, could you please, could y'all please stop it, okay? Because if not, I ain't trying to bully you, but I'm just saying I'm going to have to block. Because I want peace on here. I want people to understand what's going on with homosexuality, okay? And their children. So back to the lesson. When it comes to this being a prom queen. Now, if I was elected prom king, I'd be like, man, you know, I ain't walking down the aisle with this dude. But maybe he did. Because, again, the pressure is being told, if you don't accept this stuff, something wrong with you. See what I'm saying? This is a man. This is, I'm quite sure everybody done seen this. And this is why, brothers, we got to be aware now. There was a story that came out a couple of days, no, a couple of weeks ago, I'm sorry, about a dude who found out he was married to a woman after 19 years. I'm like, how in the world? That sex change must have been ridiculous. Okay, I see what you're saying, Brother Bernard. Anybody, man, leave Brother Bernard alone. Just let's all watch this video, man. Let's watch the lesson. Okay? Peace, bro. But this dude, he was like, my wife is really a man after 19 years. He was wondering why she couldn't have no kids. There's signs that you know you ain't got. Even, well, I ain't going to say what he said because I don't want to give some brother some idea. Some ideas and stuff if they end this here. But this dude, when I saw these pictures before, there were pictures like this out before this picture, right? And yeah, when I saw these pictures, I was like, man, that chick is fine. Till somebody was like, no, that's really a dude. And I said, oh, come on. Seriously? Because why? The attack on the youth has trained them to do the rest of this. And this is what we're ending up with now. This is the new black man. And this is the new black woman. Totally against what God said to do. That's what that's why the the, the wide gate of the world is leading to destruction. Because Satan has been attacking the youth since we were kids. Now that we're grown, there's a bunch of grown people who think it's okay and they're raising their children the same way. We, in the word of God, can't allow that to happen to our kids. That's why you got to teach them. Let's go to Leviticus 18 and 22. What did the Lord say? I see you, Brother Stokes. <laughs> you grew up around women. I mean, a lot of us could, a lot of us could kind of see, you know, in a way, but it's scary. It's really, really scary to see that a, a man can look like that. 
You know, I know everybody likes to say, you know, look at the Adam's apple, look at the hands and stuff. Man, they doing so much surgery on themselves, man. It's ridiculous. What did I say? Leviticus 18? Yeah, let's go Leviticus 18. And remember earlier when we first started this lesson, it said to the law and the testimony. And we've been reading the testimony. Let's read the law. What did the Lord say in Leviticus 18? He said in verse 22, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. This also applies to you too, women. You cannot lie down with another woman. That's what thus saith the Lord. Let's go to Leviticus 20 and read what God said again. Leviticus 20 verse 13. He said it's an abomination. And for those that say they love the Lord, they love Christ. This is what Christ said in the Old Testament. Leviticus 20 verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. We can't live in these times now because we don't live under the government of God that he gave us, Israel. So what happens these days? No one's being stoned for this. Paul told us the laws of the land, you got to abide by them. So no, Christian and urban apologists, we don't teach that this is okay. We teach what the Lord say, but we, he took away the right for people to be stoned to death. He took that away from us. So when you try to say, oh, well, you should be, you keeping all the law, you got to do that too. There's certain things we can't do no more because we disobeyed God in the first place. That's what we're not supposed to be doing. Men with men and women with women. Let's go to Deuteronomy 23. This is what thus saith the Lord. Leviticus, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 23. We're not supposed to be women on women. And this has been portrayed to our children. The children listen to these, these women right here. I forgot uh, uh, what's her name in, uh, in the pop music industry. That song was called I Kissed a Girl and I Liked It. Not supposed to put on a man's garments. I ain't talking about the pants. I'm talking about the whole suit. But she's open about her relate her marriage relationship. She's very open about it. But all of this is being done where? On the television. Here's another one. I don't know, I don't know if you guys around the world had this, but here in Chicago, this was a cigarette ad. And it was up on billboards everywhere on the south side and everywhere on the west side. I didn't see it on the north side of Chicago. I did not see this. But it says, take pride. Oh, you can't see the other part. It says, take pride, leave cigarettes. The white is probably blinding out the cigarette word. But it says, take pride, leave cigarettes. So it's an ad to help people stop smoking. But it's about being homosexual. And when our kids walk to school, they see these things. And now they think it's okay. Let's read Leviticus 23, verse 17. Leviticus 13, uh, 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So for when you got these songs out here talking about, you know, you got to use what you got to get what you want and all of that stuff. That's telling our women, it's telling us. It's telling women, period, but especially telling our women, go out there and be a hoe. Get paid. If you're going to lay down, at least get paid for it. But what did the Lord say? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, 
nor a sodomite. What is a sodomite? It says, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. That's what this is. You can't even bring the price if you go to church. If you take money for being a prostitute, whether you're a man or a female, and you put it in the pot, the Lord said, that's an abomination. Read the next verse. Let's go to Romans 1. Let's go to Romans 1. Law and the testimony, right? And I'm going to have to get started with some of these videos. Let's go to Romans 1. Let's read. Now, we don't read in the law what it says, but let's go read. What Paul wrote, Romans 1, verse 16. I'm going to be reading kind of fast with this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which they may known of God and manifest in them. For he hath showed it unto them for the visible, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by these things which are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that so that they are without excuse. When you go before your judgment, there will be no excuse for you to say, Lord, I didn't know. That's why Christ said in 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 uh, Matthew 24 that this gospel shall be preached into all nations and then the world will come to an end. But when judgment come, you will be judged by these books and you can't say I didn't know nothing because he's making sure that all his priests tell everybody. Somebody going to run into this lesson and reject it. Someone's going to run into this lesson and accept it. Let's keep reading 21, because that when they knew God. They glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was wicked. Let's skip down. Skip down to verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. So the women started getting with women. What did the men do? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust towards one another. <coughs> men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense of their error, which was was meat. This is in the New Testament. So for anybody talking about all that old law, Paul quoting the law right here. That's what he doing. Ah, oh, come on, man. Uh, let me let me go down. It did this before. All right. And this is a child. Again, this this lesson is three years old. But back then, this was a mother who was raising her son to be a girl. And there's a lot of mothers doing it. And unfortunately, we're going to see a video of a, of a father accepting this. That's why, again, this is called homosexuality, the attack on the children. Now let's look at some attacks on children. Let's watch this video. And listen closely to the lyrics. It's okay to be gay. is a television uh, no it's not television but it is a program that a lot of gay people are letting their children watch let's see what some children are watching so some drag you might see are boys dressing up as girls and girls dressing up as boys these are called drag queens and drag kings 
You can't tell right now, but I'm actually a drag queen. What? <laughs> yeah, give me one second, I'll introduce you to Mr. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Lindsay. Hi! Mm, mm, mm. Do we see the... Can you look at this image? You got the colorful, colorful rainbow. You got other colors in the back. You, you got this sister that's <laughs> dressed as a man. And then you got this drag queen. What did I tell you that we were told they were called? Female impersonators. But this is what's being presented to little kids. Let's keep, let's watch another episode. Remember that, um, that intro? Remember the intro that we just got finished watching? Dig this. It's okay to be gay. That's why I'm doing this type of lesson. For those that got a problem, where are the scriptures? Where are the scriptures? I, you got to show people stuff sometime. This is what children are watching. This is the attack on the children. Yes, gay or being homosexual is an attack on the world, but it starts with the children. And the Lord wants us to teach the children. We're going to watch another episode of this. Let's let's watch. Welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay and this is my best friend Teddy. Teddy? Yes, Lindsay. Today we have to talk about something kind of serious. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay, Lindsay. What do you want to talk about? Now, let's look at the picture of this whole scene. Again, it's a kid's classroom scene, just like you teaching kids, right? But they're using a nice little cute puppet with a nice high voice so the kids can identify. Why do you think that these kids love that song, uh, 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 Baby Shark, so much? Because the person singing in it was a kid. So now they got someone in here doing the same thing. This is the attack on the kids. Let's keep watching. First... I want you to know that this is a safe space for all of us. You can always let me know if you're feeling uncomfortable or unsafe, and you can always pause the video to talk to a friend or a grown-up, okay? Now, the, she's trying to make sure that the kids are comfortable to watch and they don't feel scared about anything. And now, here comes Satan's message. All right, I'm ready. Okay, this is something that is hard for me to talk about, and I wish I didn't have to, but it is important for you to know about. Today, we are going to talk about something called homophobia. That? Now, homophobia. Claustrophobia is when you're afraid to go into dark, I mean, closed places, right? So homophobia should, what, be, I'm scared of homosexuals? I'm not scared of homosexuals. Anybody can call me homophobia all they want to, but I'm not scared of homosexuals. I love homosexuals. I love homosexuals so much that I'm going to show you what the word of God says so you can repent and not burn in the fire. But what I do have a problem with is you pushing this on the children. That doesn't sound like a nice word. It's not. Homophobia is not a good thing. You see... We've talked about how people who are gay or queer are a little bit different from everyone else. That's really awesome. No, it's not according to the word of God. This is the world that we're living in where everything is good is evil and everything that evil is good. But this is geared to our children. But. There are some people out there who are scared of things that are different. That doesn't mean we should change who we are, but it can make things difficult. P 
people who do not like things that are different can be mean to other people. It's not being mean. It's trying to get you to conform to what the word of God says and you getting out of your flesh before you die in it. Because this is what the Lord told us to do as watchmen, warn people. Being mean to someone because they're different is unfair and it can be very hurtful. And I agree with that. I don't care if you're a homosexual. I'm not going to be mean to you. All right. There's certain things I'm not going to help you with. All right. You can be homosexual all you want to. Keep that over there. Don't get try to get with me because it ain't happening. But I'm not going to be mean to anybody. I'm not going to try to be mean. Let me put it that way. I don't like it when people are mean to other people. Me neither, Teddy. Do you remember when we talked about marriage equality? Well, homophobia is a big part of why gay people weren't allowed to be married for so long. That makes me feel kind of sad, Lindsay. Homophobia can be a sad thing. But we should never let it stop us from being true to who we are. That's right. No one can stop me from being myself. That's awesome, Teddy. And that's our problem. Satan knows this. Remember when we started at the very beginning, the imagination of man is evil from his youth. Satan knows this. So I'm going to go to the youth. I'm, remember, Adam and Eve were not grown. They were grown in their body, but in their mind, Satan went directly to the woman. And what do we see happening here? The same thing. Something that is very important to remember is that if you see someone being mean to someone else or to you, you should Always go and tell a grown-up. Okay, that sounds like a good plan, Lindsay. You can always find comfort in your friends and family and the people you trust. My community is so important to me, especially while making these videos and talking to you about being gay and queer and about gender and feminism and about all of these awesome things. Did you see how she snuck feminism into this? Did any of y'all peep that? Everything was supposed to be about gay, being homosexual, all that stuff. But she snuck in feminism. A lot of sisters ain't going to like what I'm about to say. But feminism, femin feminism, femininity is what our sister's supposed to be. Does this look feminine to you? No. This is masculine. And that's what feminism really is. It's about making women masculine and making men emas emasculating men. That's what it really comes down to. Now the family structure is all messed up. Kids don't have their parents. That's what it's about. I'm about to lose subscribers. I found a whole lot of love in this community we've been building together. And even though people are afraid of what they don't understand, they can always change. Homophobia is not permanent, and it is important for us to remember that. Oh, yay! We can help them change their minds. And we're doing our part to make that happen. Now, we So, if you have the word of God, and you know that this is wrong, what did the little bear just say? We can help them change their minds. That's nothing but Satan talking. Did God say you couldn't eat from the tree of good and evil? You shall surely not die. We want to know how you can change people's minds. Let us know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. It has meant so much. She's going to mention, I, I don't want to play it all, but I want you to understand this stuff Here's the attack on the children some more. We're going to watch some more videos. So again, parental discretion is advised. This show right here is called Steven Universe. It is a worldwide popular cartoon on Cartoon Network. Listen to the lyrics of this intro. You're
All right, brother uh, Eric, you said it's not clear. I know the, the the audio on that was kind of messed up. But the theme song is if you're gay, you're gay, and that's okay. You can make, and if you're straight, that's okay too. But you, you can make straight little babies for the whole human race. I mean, I'm sorry, gay little babies for the whole human race. That's a cartoon on CNN. On, on the Cartoon Network. Now I know it's probably on adult. But there's kids watching that, that channel. They know this. Just like this one. McScruffins. Let's watch. Brandon. Stop jumping sweet. The baby's trying to sleep. It's a great episode. You learn a very valuable lesson. Because the earthquake happens. You see this family. What's going on? They get out of the house. And they Three. become separate. Brandon run. And don't stop till I say stop. And then Doc tells them that, hey, where's your emergency meeting place? And they're like, what, what is this emergency meeting place? So it's teaching a family to have a plan. Like in case of an emergency, you know where to meet. And also to have a, a, a kit. Blankets, flashlights, and medical supplies will make a plan. The diversity of the show and having an African-American little girl be the star of the show and also being a doctor it sends a great message it's important to have a kit that has everything you need in case you have to leave your house quickly it was just such a positive role model i am a fan of doc mcstuffins my kids they watch the show with this episode they see a family that looks like our family we're two moms and we have a boy and a girl, two kids. It's going to be very exciting for them to see that, to see our family represented. We're a family and family stick together. What has happened in our households now is it's, it's, it's already rough. Yeah, Bugs Bunny, y'all. But it's rough being a parent. So a lot of us have allowed the television to raise our kids go watch tv all right now you may look at a couple of uh, uh shows and be like okay that's cool but this is dr mcscruffins right that's just an episode that's not the whole thing so they can throw that episode anytime they want to because they believe you believe that it's okay <laughs> to watch this show and there's a lot of cartoons for our babies to watch because of that. There's a lot of shows. I actually had to take out. Well, when we get to it, I'll talk about it. Let's keep going. But yeah, let's watch some stuff that we grew up on. Now, I'm going to keep going because I'm running out of time. But, yeah, we were shown these things. Look, man, these cats, man, when they were making cartoons, they had already started to put stuff like this in cartoons. But at the time, the cartoons were only for adults because they showed these cartoons in theaters. Then the television came out and they started putting it on there. But now, kids were watching the cartoons. Let's see something else. Y'all probably know what this is just looking at those windows. And as the sponsor of the Tasty Pastry Program, I officially welcome you to the contest. Uh, Mrs. Flamestone and Mrs. Rubble. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I hope your ladies find this room satisfactory. Yes, it's charming. Don't you think so, Betty? Ain't it just ducky, Betty? Ouch! I mean, ouch! <laughs> My recipe partner's voice is a bit hoarse from the plane ride. She does sound a bit peculiar, doesn't she? Perhaps you ladies should freshen up a bit before we go 
floor of the TV studio. That's a good idea, sir. We are a bit of a mess after the plane ride. So, again, our children. I'm not playing the whole videos because, like I said, I ain't got that much time. And I really want to get to these other videos. But that is what was being shown to us. And I'm not sure if the Flintstones still come on in certain places. But that is what we were looking at. And a lot of people have now accepted that and, and ain't got a problem with their children watching stuff like this. Now, this right here is the reason why I took cable out of my, not this, this, this uh, particular episode, but what it was is one day I came home, my kids were watching, uh, oh, now I can't remember now. It'll probably come to me while I play the video. Let me play this. Keep it moving. The reason why, and this was just sent to me a couple days ago. The reason why I took cable out of my crib, because when my kids were babies, they were watching the Disney Channel. And Raven Simone, that's so Raven came on. I come in the house one day, I stand in the doorway, I'm watching them watch it. And they were making jokes. The, the, the two children, Raven Simone and her brother, was roasting their father. They were talking about their father and they played a laugh track behind the jokes. And immediately I said, oh, no, you don't. I turned it off. I got rid of cable because y'all not about to sit up here, crack jokes on me and think it's all right. Y'all will get stomped. And you don't want to get stomped. So my best thing is to take this up out of here. That's what I did. And, and that's when they were babies. My, 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 all my kids are teenagers now. But this was sent to me a couple of days ago. You know, this is Disney. Don't think just because there's a TV program, a uh, station that gears towards children, that everything is okay. Disney is about to introduce the first boy princess on a show that also features first gay kisses. And I guess this is going to be on the Disney XD channel has introduced the company's first male princess on the same show that previously drew controversy for featuring the first same-sex kisses. Again, like I said, this is a warning for parents to watch what your kids are dealing with and also to teach them the word of God so they can understand this ain't cool. This, move, this, this is a short film that has won awards around the world pay close attention people
Sister Kimbrough, but it is worldwide, it has won a lot of awards. But who is it geared towards? Children. I don't even need to explain the video. Who wants to be a drag queen when they grow up? On the drag queen go swish, 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 swish. Drag queen story hour is uh, fantastic because. So, just for people that are watching, they got a problem with my the, the way I teach and what I do in this video. This is what's going on, and a lot of parents don't know this. This is at a library, and parents are now taking their children. To look up to this, to accept this. As, uh, it addresses all of these issues of gender fluidity and self acceptance um, and all of these topics that are real, are very, very real. Do you get it? Everyone thinks that this girl is a boy because she's a little bit of a tomboy. So I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to keep it moving. But that's something. That happened a couple of years ago in Brooklyn. Atlanta, I think, had one last year. I knew there was brothers that was going to talk about protesting. Again, I ain't into protesting. I'm into showing what the Word of God says. Now, this is a Canadian boy. I'm not going to play the whole video, but I want you to see that this dude's parents are with what he's doing. Lactation is the devious diva you could ever think of. Good morning. Like my sister's tutu since I was like threes and fours, even like twos, and I've been dancing around in like little pink dresses and stuff. So yeah, I think I've had lactation inside of me since I was born, and that's why I love that song, Born This Way. We just want our kids to express themselves however they see fit, as long as it's respectful and they're nice people, we really don't care. I like dancing, and I like performing, and I love, not only you like, I love dressing up. It makes me feel very happy, like I am accepted. The red yes. wig with the red dress, and, and then the blonde wig with this dress. When he was about two, he came to me with uh, Mr. Potato Head earrings and asked me to put makeup on him. So we did a little, like, drag photo shoot, and he duck face. It was very sweet. And yeah, anytime he wanted makeup, I just put, put some on him. A little bit of dark, and a little bit of swoon, and then a little bit of power couple. I want natural contour. You want realness? Yeah. What, drag realness? Yes. yes. I also want stuff coming off of my eyes. When he was about seven, we started watching RuPaul's Drag Race. I think when he saw that that was an actual art form and they could be whatever they wanted, I think he decided that that's when. Did you hear what the mother said? When he was, when he was younger, he started watching who? Re RuPaul's Drag Race. Now the child saw that, thought it's cool, and this is what this dad, this cat wants to be, and the parents are all with it. I'm going to skip towards the end. Let me see if I can find it. Yep. Because I want you to see, I want you to listen to this. Okay. This dude's about to meet someone that he admires that was on RuPaul's Drag Race. This is what I want to do. Hello, 
gorgeous. Um, My advice to you is keep going. Learn your lyrics well. Give them face. Give them choreography. Give them a lot of energy. They will always remember your energy. Left foot forward. There you go. And chest up, head up. When you give them your face, just do it like it's a rainbow sweep, as in you're gonna take in all of this wonderfulness. Just like there you go. Notice he said, do your face like the rainbow. You're going to take in all of this wonderful. Say name, do nothing but using folks to destroy. And he going after the children. Diva in the making. I love it. It's because of people like you. Listen. That I'm here. You are my replacement. Oh, why? Why would this cat? Why would this little kid be this grown man's replacement? Because homosexuals cannot reproduce. So they have to take your kids to be their kids. And you're going to be wonderful at this. You're going to have lots of fun with it. And it's gonna take you to a lot of wonderful places. I take voguing classes. Oh, you take voguing classes? By the time you turn 12, you are going to be a weapon of mass devastation. Wow. By the time you turn, now, if you didn't hear what the kid said, he said, I'm taking voguing classes. And he said, you're, you are, by the time you're 12, you will be a weapon of mass devastation. All Satan talks about is destroying. A lot of people ask me if I'm going to be a drag queen forever, and it's always the same answer. Probably. Let's go to the next video with the same person. Now remember, this is a, this is what I think he's probably a preteen by now. But listen to the message that now the te the the child is giving to other children. I think that anyone can do what they want in life. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. If you want to be a drag queen and your parents don't let you, you need new parents. If you want to be a drag queen and your friends don't let you, you need new friends. All right, boys and girls and everything in between. The child is now rebelling because the child don't know no better. If When I did my lesson last week, is Christ a respecter of children? This is the reason why Christ killed children. Because the, the, the they watched what the older people did and they became that. And when Christ didn't want that, that's why he got down on children. That's why only eight adults came out of the flood. Only adults. The parents have taken this boy to a club to Vogue. Why? Why? Exactly, Brother Watchman. He's stripping and he's 11 years old. He's in front of all of these. If, if you go into a gay club and you're a child doing this, aren't gay clubs men supposed to be attracted to men? Well, now they're going to be attracted to this boy. People don't see this pattern, man. Let's keep it moving. I'm not going to play this video, but I'm going to show this picture. This is a book. This is a book called Promised Land. And it's about two people, two princesses, princes finding each other in the forest. Now, I do have a video for it, but I'm not going to show it because I want to show the rest of this. And yeah, for those that are watching, yeah, this is coming down to pedophilia now. 
You open up one door and it continues to go every place else. It's coming down to pedophilia. Love is a gender and age blind. Do you not see why the Lord got rid of everybody in the, before the flood the first time? He said himself, the world is so wicked, he wish he never made man. Because these are the things that they were probably doing then. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, pedosexual. What does that tell you? Pansexuality. What is pansexuality? That's you can love anything and any anything, period. Even animals. That's what this is. We are living in perilous times, people. What's this right here? This is a mother and a daughter. I guess the mother couldn't wait till her daughter turned 18. And they so-called love each other. And want to be together. This is the church trying to tell everybody what's going on. But, get, but guess what? Don't nobody want to hear this stuff. They don't want to hear this. So... When people are trying to tell you something and you're rebelling against the church, and I ain't talking about the false church, even though they're trying to tell people the same thing, you're, you're doing the works of Satan. Even the LGB community, LGBT, whatever you want to call them, alphabet, want to have priests that are gay now. This has nothing to do with the word of God. Nothing at all. Let's go to uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy 2. I'm going to actually go over 10 o'clock, but not too much. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. This also know that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, un unthankful, and unholy. Without natural affection, what's natural affection? A man with a woman and a woman with a man. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontents, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, highly, oh, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than of lovers of God. Let's go to Proverbs 28. Let's go to Proverbs 28. Because this is what we have come to. Proverbs 28, let's read. Verse 4. Proverbs 28 and verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. But such as keep the law contend with them. What is marriage? Let us read. Marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and a woman consent. Does not say man, man. Does not say woman, woman. Consummated and continuously nourished by sexual intercourse. And perfected in, the, in a lifelong partnership of mutual love and commitment. It is also a social institution regulated by the word of God, not by the laws of the land. It's by the word of God and by the laws and customs which a society develops to safeguard its own continuity and welfare. So here's a question. If you're marrying like this, how do you keep your society from how do you keep your society going? Because if all males married each other and all females married each other, there's no more kids. This is not marriage. This isn't that this is not even close to marriage, but our children are being told that it is. And again, I'm not on here to tell people where they're going. You know, I see some of y'all doing it. I have a problem, but I stopped doing that. I started telling people, listen, you better listen to what the word of God says, because he ain't playing. And if you don't believe, OK, 
I've done my part as a watchman. But this is not marriage. This is marriage. Let's go to Isaiah 5. We're going to read 21, 20 through 24. I'm going to put it back on here. I'm going to put it back on here while I read this. Isaiah 5, 20 through 24. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light. Where is Satan dwelling at again? In darkness. Where are the angels? In darkness. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent unto their own sight. Woe unto them that are, that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. You know how many people are getting paid to promote homosexuality? You can't, pro Israel, we can't promote this. And if anybody wants to be a part of the commonwealth of Israel and get into the kingdom of God, you can't promote it either. That's why I showed all of those videos and, and, and pictures of stuff that we grew up on that's promoting this stuff. But this is what thus saith the Lord. That's marriage. That's the original trinity. The original trinity. An only trinity happened in the garden. Man, woman, and see that Bible he got in his hand? God. That's marriage. That's what we're supposed to be teaching our children. And that's what we have to teach our children. Because outside the four walls of our um, uh, home, well, yeah, it depends on what you're doing in the home. But outside the four walls of whatever camp or church we go to, children got to deal with that the rest of the week. They got to go to school and get scorned for not being friends with someone because they're gay, not hanging out, not promoting. Girl, I'm about to get married. I'm not coming. Why not? And then we got to teach our kids how to endure that and show them it's going to hurt. That stuff is going to hurt. Yeah. This is called active hate groups, right? Notice black separatists are at the top. <laughs> Notice black separatists, and that's almost all of the so-called Israelites, Muslims, whatever you want to call. When it comes to blacks organizing together, we are black separatists. Now, that's at the top, right? Then you got the Ku Klux Klan, anti-Muslim. Wow. General hate. What's general hate? White nationalist, neo-Nazi, racist skin, skinhead. But look at anti-LGBT. What is that doing there? So if you are teaching that homosexually, homosexualism is wrong in the eyes of God, I guess we qualify to be in here. But like I said, you will be teased. And if there's any children teaching and you're doing exactly what the word of God says and you're not trying to deal or help promote. Again, I ain't got a problem with people being friends. But when you want me to do what you're doing, no. And I ain't doing it. And eventually you're not going to be friends because eventually the person is going to get sick and tired of you not doing what they're doing. And they ain't going to want to hang with you no more. But you will be teased. And you got to endure it until the end, no matter how hard it hurts. You have to endure it until the end. Gay is not the new black. Gay people were not born gay. Nobody knew about sex until they got older. That's what kills me about the whole that that that's a statement coming straight from the from Satan. That you were born gay. No, you were not. No, I didn't know I was born black. Till I got older and someone taught me that I was. 
So how in the world do you know you're ble- you you were born gay? You don't know. Well, I just knew when I was a kid, and and, and I just I was just attracted. That's because somebody was not teaching you that's wrong, and not dealing with you. Instead of just saying that's wrong, you better not do it, or I'm gonna kick your behind. That's where the word of God comes into play, where we got to show, hey, no, nah, no, nah, that ain't right. Let me show you what the Lord say. And then the kids on their own, you know, when they get older, if they want to do what they want to do, fine. But uh, let us remember, these children got to deal with stuff like this. And this ain't, this ain't, this is worse than it was when we were kids, adults. Today is worse than, I feel sorry for these children. That's another reason why I'm so passionate about trying to teach children because they got it harder than what we had it. Let us read. No, let's watch this. Yeah, I'm going over 10 o'clock. They got it so hard. Let's take a listen. Uh, how about Ayo Kemathi? Listen closely to what this brother is about to is talk about. My name is Kimothy. I'm a Prince George's County resident. Thank you for this opportunity to come and speak. Uh, very recently, I discovered or it was reported that the Prince George's County School Board voted unanimously to, uh, in favor of a Black Lives Matter initiative uh, for a week during Black History Month. Now understand, this is supposed to be about Black Lives Matter, right? But watch what... I've saw this years ago, not this video, but I saw the agenda of Black Lives Matter a long time ago, and people kicked against me, but I'm, now I know I ain't the only one that's watching this. I'm assuming that the Prince George's County School Board did not know this, and I'm pretty sure that most of the parents and concerned citizens who are sitting here did not know that the stated public acknowledged goal of Black Lives Matter as it relates to educating black children is to promote homosexuality and transgenderism as natural and normal acceptable behavior to children. It is a national initiative that they have publicly stated that their goals and objectives are doing nationally, specifically targeting black children and in this particular case in Prince George's County, bypassing the rights of parents whose religious and cultural belief systems would not be in favor of their elementary school children being taught to accept transgenderism and homosexuality against the culture of them as black people, against their religious cultures in the church. This is elementary school that this dude is talking about. The attack on the children. They did not teach me this in when I was in elementary school. But now they want to force it as a curriculum. They've already, some states have already passed this. And they wanted to, I've already said, if I told my kids, if they get to trying to teach you this in school, you let me know. I will go up there and talk to them. Y'all better not. They going to fail this class bypassing them without parents being even informed mm. and being taught that in their second, third, fourth grade classroom. Lord have mercy. What I have here for anyone who wants confirmation of this fact, you can go to saveblackchildren.com. You can see it for yourself. I also have official Black Lives Matters handouts where they say that their objective is to promote transgenderism, and homosexuality to our children and you can see it on their agenda it's again black lives matter only really came out when the police did something but now their agenda is to promote homosexuality how do i know this to be fact because if anybody ever watched what was it last summer or the summer before that there was uh what's the church it's on 63rd and woodlawn i don't want to say the church name don't even remember. But there was a pastor that was there that secretly asked 
a gay woman to leave the church. She can't be a member there if she's supposedly married to another woman. Well, the woman went and told the LGBT community. They all came out there. But who came with them? Black Lives Matter. I was there. And I was the only one that spoke up. You can check it on my videos. I was the only one that spoke up because it was all black. And that's the other thing that tripped me out. There wasn't no white people there. Now, again, Israel, understand something. You willing to go run to the north side or downtown if somebody do something against gay folks, right? But when something happened in your community, none of them other nations came to your side. There was no white people. There was all black. And, they, and Black Lives Matter was with there with them, helping promote the uh, protesting against the church. What I would say is that I'm hoping and I'm assuming that the board did not know that this was what their real true objective is and that the board would come out with something publicly to say we weren't aware, we did not intend to bypass parents' rights to protect their children's sanity uh, by allowing this kind of agenda, agenda into our school system. And in the event that the board did know that this was the objective, which I'm, I'm confident that the board did not know. I want to say, as a black man who is responsible for protecting the well-being of black men, women, and children, that myself and like-minded people like me definitively will not stand in Prince George's County or anywhere else in this country for this type of thing to be pushed on our children against our will. Thank you for listening. Amen and amen. That's, brothers, that's what us as black men or Israelite men or fathers are supposed to do. We're supposed to stand up for our community when it comes to the word of God. And if people, I see what you said, Brother Watchman. Me, I would have took them out. I know my kids probably would have been upset. What do you mean I can't play football no more? Huh. But that's what we're supposed to do. That's how we're supposed to stand up as men for our community, for our women, for our children. When it comes to protesting for something, it got to be something that goes with the word of God. Now, you you out there protesting because the police didn't shot another boy. I'm going to tell you now, I ain't on that because I know these curses in here. But when you start trying to mess with my kids and their mind process and how they think, that's when I got a problem. So like I just showed, they showing this, this they're, they're teaching in this, what did he say? Second, third, and fourth grade classes. The attack on the children. And now we have this going on. Change, that's what some are calling for, after two transgender teens swept events during last week's track and field state championship. One of the other girls who competed and her mother say the pair had an unfair advantage and that it's time for the governing body of the high school athletics to change their rules. News A's Amy Hudak tells us about the petition they started. Amy. The rule for high school athletics is that the student can compete for the gender-specific sport they identify with. One parent who started a petition says she doesn't necessarily want to reverse the policy. She actually wants to add to it. Let's understand something. I said this on a post a while ago. Remember at the beginning when we were when I started this video, I was saying that Satan went to the woman and the woman took it to Adam. Right. Satan has done the same thing again through feminism. And the same thing that's going on now went on then. Who, and I know sisters, well, at least y'all Israelite sisters going to agree with me. But I know a bunch of women that ain't going to agree. Who are the ones that helped this whole thing when it comes down to homosexuality to be glorified? Women did. I'm quite sure there was some men. But when you got a you got a friend that's your best friend and he's gay and y'all going out together and buying dresses and makeup and shoes and girl, you looking fierce and all that. You're helping promote that. That's why the Lord said, well, we, well, we just read you calling evil good. 
as women, you should be telling the, those men, nah, man, you, you can't, uh, uh, but no, oh, he's gay. He ain't going to try to have sex with me and he could be my best friend. That's what Satan was counting on. And now there's women upset because the same transgender, homosexuals, whatever, are taking their jobs and now beating them in sports like this. Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood smoked the competition at last week's state championships for track and field. When you look at the competitions and they turn into a complete blowout, you realize that something is different. Miller. Wait a minute. A complete blowout. But if you help say that everybody should be what they want to be. And, and this brother here is saying, I want to be a girl. And now I want to run on the girls track team. You can't get see it unbackfired on you. And Yearwood are both transgender born boys. They raced against the girls. <laughs> Selena Sewell competed with them and says it's an unfair advantage. Oh, I have no problem with them. Oh, now it's unfair. Come on. Being a girl and wanting to be a girl, my issue is with CAC. The CIAC. Okay, she says she has no problem with them wanting to be girls, but these so-called girl boys are blowing you out. And now there's an issue. They shouldn't be running with us. Wait a minute, you can't say that they can be girls, but they can't run with us because they're really not girls. That's oxymoron. Does their policy follow state law? Teens can compete for the team they gender identify with. Sewell's mother, Bianca Stanescu, started a petition in Glastonbury. Not to change the rule, but to add to it. My solution is to come up something similar to NCAA. If they did complete a hormone therapy, and just like the Olympics require a waiting period, yes, at that point they should be allowed to compete as a female and if they don't complete hormone therapy, they could run at the same time with the girls, but take the times and post them somewhere else. Inclu wait a minute, wait a minute. They can run with the girls, but post their time. So, so if they beat these girls, now they want, they don't want their times to be posted so for people to see it. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't sit up here and help promote these guys. Oh yeah, it's good. You could be, no. As women, you're supposed to be telling these men, you are a man. Be a man. That's what women are supposed to do. But because women are saying, oh, girl, it's okay. You can be whatever you want to because they want the friendship and all that. Now, and I saw your comment. I meant to say that too, Brother Watchman. They not just beating them in sports, but they taking your man too. Because now, oh, it's okay to be gay? There ain't no good men out here. What is What do women be saying? There ain't no good men out here. They all either locked up or gay. Well, what do you expect? Let's keep watching. Civity, and in this particular case, Fairness can both be maintained. A second petition is also circulating in Plainville. Stanescu says she's invited the CIAC and the transgender community to sit down together, but hasn't heard back. The CIAC says it's tricky legal territory. In Connecticut, teens transitioning have to be at least 16 and meet specific requirements to undergo hormone therapy. Miller and Yearwood are just sophomores. It's unclear if they've started hormone therapy. Many in the community, including those petitioning against the CIAC, are praising Miller and Yearwood for their courage. They're praising these guys for being girls. That's praising the wicked. The sad thing is that these boys don't know what they're doing is wicked. That's why we got to teach. That's why we got to teach our children the word of God. Train up a child in the way he should go. He should not depart from it. He may he may wander off a little bit here. But when he get older, yeah, you know, I did wrong. Andrea Yearwood actually stepped out at the New England Championship to give the spot to another girl. Hmm. 
The CIAC says they're open to talking about this and possibly sitting down and meeting with um, some of the participants who are involved. But it's such a complex issue. Yeah, it's really complicated. And there's a lot of legal territory as sure. well. So. A lot of people. Higher court. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people talking about this, Amy, especially on our Facebook page, things like that, right? Yeah, it's definitely ignited a conversation. And of course, we want you to join in on that conversation. This is what all we're supposed to be doing right here. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The things that we've been watching is not keeping the commandments of God. It just hasn't been. But here's the thing. For everyone that's involved with that community or whatever, you have a way out as well. You're not dead, so you're not dead in your sins. You have a way out. Let's go to Matthew 5, Matthew 4. Let's read the first thing Jesus said in his ministry. Matthew 5, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. If you're sitting in darkness, Jesus got a way for you to see the light as well. Saw great light. Hey, what you doing? Oh, hold on, let me cut that off. Okay. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you're in this whole community, if your children is in this, in this community and you're promoting it, I'm going to say the same thing. That my big brother has said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What are you repenting from? Everything we just got finished reading that's in the book. He's the one that that has that wrote down. Well, he didn't write it down. Christ is the one that gave all of the father's will, the, the law, commandment, statutes. He's the one that gave it to Moses. And Moses gave it to us to teach the rest of the world. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, I don't need you doing all that. And he's the one that gave it to us for the rest of the world. So the first thing you have to do is go to the Lord and repent. Say, I ain't never going to do this again. And you got to mean it. You got a meaning because a lot of a lot of what's going on is actually destroying our children. Let's go to first John three and verse four. Because the thing is. The world's not being taught that we have to keep the commandments of God. They're being told that we just have to be in grace and and that's it. But let's read in the New Testament. 1 John 3 and 4, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So, anytime someone tells you something is a sin, show me in the law where, it is, where it's at. First, repent. Then start learning this book. Start learning what the laws of God say and try to stick to them. It's not going to be easy in the beginning. Hey, sometimes it ain't even easy now. But the Lord said my people will suffer, will, will uh, be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Just because you did not know what the Lord said don't mean you ain't going in that fire. That's the best thing to do is to learn this book. Learn who Christ really is because Christ is the one said if you want eternal life, keep my commandments. He said that in Matthew 19 and verse 17. Because the rest of this stuff is going to put people in the fire. But you got a way out. You got a way to repent. And that's the beautiful thing about Christ. Because other than that, we're all supposed to be dead. Everybody. So, I thank everybody. Let me see. I got that other video. Yeah. So, this right here I want to show before I go off. No, there's, there's no uh, what you call it to it. 
This cup is showing you the other one that's dirty is sin. And then we got Christ. And all of the stuff that we talked about is in that cup of sin. And that cup of sin is about the poor sin in the you. But watch the rest. I thank everybody for watching. Please share the video. Please like the video. Share it. Uh, do watch parties. Put it in different groups. Share because the world is, is going to get worse because of this. But what we got to do, <laughs> we got to show our children how to fight this world. That's the whole thing. So I thank everybody for watching. All glory, glory and power and honor to the Most High, to the Father in the name of Jesus. Happy Sabbath, y'all. Hallelujah.